Oh, hello. Hey, friends. <laughs> Welcome back to Attack the Pantry. I am Jen De La Vega. Uh, this stream is a deep dive into ingredients, cooking techniques, and recipes to help you cook for yourself during the ongoing panini and for the rest of your adult life. Um, say hello in the chat uh, and uh, throw us an egg in there if you like what you're seeing or hearing. That is how we lo show love around here. Uh, in these there parts, you know, uh, <laughs> last time here on Attack the Pantry, we, we made an attempt at savory sourdough granola. I actually think it turned out well. Uh, you can buy it on Etsy. I'm selling uh, little samples of it. Uh, you can click the link down below. You can watch all the past clips here on my channel if you click on videos or the entire archive is located at youtube.com slash J-E-N-N-D-L-V. How's it going, David? Good to see ya. Glad you're here. <laughs> um, what else is happening? Um, here's this new thing on Twitch called Moments. Anyone who is a mod can trigger a moment and you can save these to your profile. It's really interesting, but we're just testing it out right now. But you can read all about it there in the chat. Um, I'm a Twitch affiliate. I have to save the business up front. Uh, for every subscription, every cheer, every bit, uh, that real money trickles down to me so that I can make this uh, stream a little bit better each time. But if you don't have, you know, cash monies, you can uh, connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account and you get a free subscription to your favorite creators every month. So if you have one, click on that purple button that says gift a sub and you're going to get that cute little crown next to your name in the chat. Oh my god. Another way to participate is uh, we have a wish list of items that I will be cooking with this year. Um, it's been very exciting to uh, do these cook-alongs and uh, you can help power the show by uh, getting things on the wish list or suggesting items to put on the wish list um, that you want to see me cook with because uh, you don't have to get all those things. I can just get them, you know, whatever. Uh, lots of really good links below the video, but one way to help us out is to tell people that you are watching the show right now, right now, because the more the merrier, and, uh, Twitch only sends that notification to people who have the app or, <laughs> or have the browser open. So, uh, yes, that really helps. Tell, tell people that, that you're watching and tell them to get in here, get in the chat, get in the chat. Um, Speaking of bringing people on, I have a guest today, and I'm very, very excited to welcome my friend Lenny. What's up? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> uh, Lenny, tell the people who you are and what you do. My name is Lenny, and um, I uh, perform like synthesizer-based music that's kind of like cinematic, uh, uh, dark type stuff um, <laughs> <laughs> under the name Hanzilla. And um, yeah, so I like uh, did an EP years ago. I've released a few singles over the year working on a new project now. And uh, I have a Twitch stream on Wednesday nights where I take old public domain films and we just play them and try to come up with cool like on the fly soundtracks to them. That's so rad. I have to catch one. That is so cool. <laughs> thanks. Um, thanks. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's like sometimes it's a little sl like slow, you know, because you're trying you're trying to catch like vibes and stuff. And sometimes because I've never seen the move any of these movies, so sometimes like <laughs> I see changes real fast. And you got like this cool build up, and then it's like something else. So, uh, so yeah, it's 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 fun though. It's. Um, it's uh, we're getting we're getting the hang of things and have fun with it. I, I love that added chaos of never seeing the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like literally the only experience I have with the movie each week is like when I pick it, like mm -hmm. I'll go through the uh, the file just to like find a good screenshot to post to like social. Mm -hmm. uh, but besides that, 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 that's like the only thing. So I know <laughs> with this week's movie, like it's bloody. There's bad guys with bloody eyes <laughs> so that's, that's public domain <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's amazing yeah. um the lenny how do we know each other well you uh you you just helped figure out the the timeline here but we we're uh we grew up in the same hometown yeah uh, of, of lancaster palmdale the the glorious desert twin cities, and uh, <laughs> we went to high school together. Yep, yep, yep. 
Uh, we, I, yeah, I, we, I think we've known each other for about 22 years. Yep. Yeah, that's a long time. Yeah. Uh, and you went to school where again? You went to college where? Uh, UCLA. That's right. That's right. And I went up to Davis. So, you know, we, we kind of lost touch there. But I think with yeah. the advent of social media, like we were able to reconnect again. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Which is so cool. Yeah, I think you have the record for guest who has known me longest. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so far. So far. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I'll, I'll hold the title and um, I'll have to like um, when they break like a record, something usually the person does like a recording, you know, to like wish the other person wish who to broke somebody it. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. Congratulations. So, uh, you've taken the mantle my, uh... from me. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. Um, but I'm excited to talk about synths and burgers with you. You can see a little preview behind you. You've got some some keyboards and, and toys behind you, which is oh, very yeah. cool. Oh, uh, look at that setup. Look at that setup. It's so professional. Right too. <laughs> oh my God. You're just surrounded. This is it's, your. Yeah, it's like a full your, on, like, uh, your synth cave. Mad scientist lab. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, it's kind of like me, um, except with cooking equipment. If I rotate my. Uh, camera yes. here. I've got racks, and oh. racks of equipment. Oh, that's yeah. a nice setup. It's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, I, I, you know, I need it for my day to day, which is a lot of cooking. But uh, right my on. my other room, my spare room, almost looks like your room there. But <laughs> I, I've put everything away. All my scents are in the closet right now. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Gotta um, gotta um gotta bring them out sometime we could do a little jam oh my gosh that'd be so fun i don't i don't know the first thing about hooking them up to the computer though <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like really analog when it comes to the so keyboards and stuff like, that's good that's like that's like street cred i'm, I'm just analog <laughs> man <laughs> yeah we have like records and cassettes uh, it's just warmer man <laughs> yeah, yeah seriously it's crunchier <laughs> it's yeah. crunchier um Anyway, the next segment of the show, I like to, sh to do a little show and tell of um, what folks have been eating and cooking or seeing on the internet. So uh, those of you in the chat who would like to participate next week, you can DM me or tag me on Instagram and Twitter with your cooking photos or things that you see at the farmer's market or ingredients in your pantry that you're like, why do I have this? What do I do with it? Oh, my God. Um, and we can talk through it. But um, let me just uh, share some slides real quick. Check it out, All professional. Right. We. <laughs> oh yeah. I know we can, we can see both of us still and uh, check out the photos. Um, this came in from Avery, and this is actually one of the hot dogs that I designed <laughs> at Wonderville. Nice. Which is a bar in Bushwick. It's an arcade slash bar, um, and we have house hot dogs. And this is the QP mayo and uh, turmeric kimchi hot dog. You see, oh, Avery God. took a few bites out of it already. <laughs> yeah, it's very I love exciting. QP. Yeah. Huh? What'd you say? I said QP is so great. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, for those of you who are new to QP mayonnaise, it is a Japanese brand of mayonnaise that has a little bit of rice vinegar and sugar in it. So it's a little bit sweeter and thinner. It's not as thick as like uh, what we have here in the States, like Hellman's or... Uh, uh, what other brands of mayo are there? <laughs> I don't remember. Elman's uh, east of the Mississippi and uh, best foods west of that's the right. Mississippi. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> um, this came in from Robert. It looks like some uh, roasted okra. Looks nice and crispy. And then on the right, we have some tortilla soup. Oh, Lenny, when was the last time you had tortilla soup? I... I... I will answer that in a second, but can we acknowledge how nice that plate is underneath yes. the okra? <laughs> yes, it's very pretty. <laughs> it's very, very pretty. You know what? Like, I hate to say it. Like, I feel like I, it's been a while since I had tortilla soup, but like, it's probably like at one of those restaurants from like our hometown. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. Ooh, hey, Donnell is here in the chat. Good to see you. That tortilla soup looks bussin'. Yeah, it looks good. Oh, and yeah. thank you for subscribing for 22 months in a row. I think, Donnell, you have the record. <laughs> for what is that between the, what's that between the avocado and the chips? I believe that is some sour cream. Oh, nice. Okay, perfect. Oh, <laughs> David, you're at six. I appreciate you anyway, David. <laughs> 
Amazing. This looks delicious. Now I want to have some yeah. tortilla soup. Yes. Um, oh, this is from me. Uh, I took this last night. This is the, <laughs> this is the newest hot dog at Wonderville. Um, you can see we have retro vibes here at Wonderville. <laughs> um, this is a QP aioli. You can tell that I really love QP. Um, <laughs> so I've, I've added some roasted garlic and um, roasted onions to the QP mayonnaise. And then on top, we have a Fuego Takis crunch, like extra garlic flavor. Um, so it's just, it's not just crushed up Takis, but I've added crispy garlic as well. So it's like extra, like vampiric, oh, wow. you know, extra. <laughs> um, I think we named this the Belmont after the hero in Castlevania. <laughs> oh, cool. Next time, I think we're going to try to do the Alucard. I think that's the other name of the character in Castlevania. Uh, double garlic. Double garlic hot dog. We'll see. We'll see. I'll try to come up with something. Double Alucard. <laughs> yeah. Alucard garlic. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Good portmanteau. Very good. <laughs> Alucard. Ooh. Alucard. <laughs> I like that. I'll put that one on the screen. Hell yeah. <laughs> Um, this is from a recipe that I posted on Foo 52 a couple weeks ago. Um, it's for a, re it's for a dish called, um, adobang mani, which is garlic peanut. You can tell I love garlic. <laughs> it's, it's garlic fried peanuts with curry leaves and Thai chili peppers. It's my dad's favorite, uh, snack to eat when he's watching a Laker game. <laughs> so I wrote a little bit about that and, uh, how to make it. So that's, that's up on food52.com. You can just search for my name and you'll be able to find the recipe. Oh, sweet. Mm -hmm. Um, this week's Patreon recipe is a corn muffin made with sourdough discard. So a lot of folks know that I've been struggling with sourdough. <laughs> like I didn't do it when everyone else did it at the beginning of the <laughs> pandemic. Um, so now I'm, I'm learning about your struggles <laughs> and, uh, I'm just trying to figure out what to do with the discard every single day. And so, uh, this has probably been the, my most successful recipe, which is the, uh, sourdough corn muffin. And I really, really love it. Yeah. Um, lunch yesterday was a, uh, fried salmon on top of, uh, ochazuke, which is, uh, rice that's been soaking in uh, dashi stock. Um, so we got some some nori bits, sesame seeds, and then a bed of arugula underneath because I'm an adult and need to eat my greens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I saw this on an episode of Midnight Diner, so I was like, oh, I should eat that. Uh, <laughs> this is not pottery. <laughs> this is um, soba noodle dough. Uh, made of a little bit of the sourdough. So it kind of looks like clay. So I shaped it like I was about to make like a ceramic pot, <laughs> like as a joke. And then someone replied to me on Instagram saying like, put this in the Noguchi Museum. <laughs> and Noguchi, for anyone who doesn't know, is a uh, Japanese sculptor who did a lot of minimal things like this. And his, his museum is honestly a bunch of giant rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks kind of like that. Pretty funny. Um, Lenny, let's talk about <laughs> these leftovers. Where'd you get all these leftovers? So there is a really phenomenal fried chicken place, like uh, a few blocks from where I live called Jim Dandy's. And um, they, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's like they, whatever they do, the breading almost gets it like a, like some kind of cracker. Like Ooh. that's like how it, that's how the um, the breading tastes. So we had a little bit of that left over, and I'm home alone for a few days. So um, after watching <laughs> your stream, I was like, why don't I do something with the leftovers, you know? Usually usually when it comes to, like, leftover stuff, I will just throw it all in a pan and fry it, like, you know, fry it, saute it up. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I did. Uh, actually, that's uh, – no, no, that's ranch, not QP. We're, we're in the QP <laughs> mode. But I, um, I'm pointing as if people could see what I'm pointing to. But um, – <laughs> but, but it's the it's they have like a really good like spicy rice that they use as like a side and that's their fry so i just basically mm. like sauteed all that up and then did like a ranch with a little bit of um like uh, oh i i i, I really like crystals but like we, we i actually dropped an entire like 
like family sized bottle and shattered everywhere the oh, other day. No. So that's that's ranch zinged up with some Frank's Red Hot. <laughs> still pretty good. I mean, Frank's is still pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But R.I.P. F in the chat for that crystal <laughs> bottle. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no. A beast my to goodness. clean up and just like heartbreaking because like that's my go-to for like pizza and all kinds it's of other so stuff. It's so good. I love a crystal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have a, your bite here. <laughs> yeah. Delicious. And that's uh, that's that's uh, showing my age in the background. That's my Coke Zero. You know, making sure no sugar. <laughs> <with>. <laughs> Um, rewind for a second. Are you a pour over guy? <laughs> Wait, oh, uh, with the fries? No, no, your kettle in the back. Are, oh, do you do coffee oh, okay. pour over? That's, a, that's... <laughs> I thought you were saying, like, am I a pour over guy? Like, do I put the ketchup all over the fries oh, no. instead of like dipping? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we should make that a term, yeah, for putting ketchup over fries. I actually, um, I actually, we were on a we were on a road trip a few weeks ago, and uh, one of our hotel rooms had an electric kettle. Mm. And I was like, "Where have I been with in the electric kettle world here?" <laughs> and so, like, I literally one. got home and just got one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we do coffee usually either French press or we have like a one of those like Breville uh, mm. espresso machines, like Ooh. the the one that's like where you can like see the pressure. So I'm always like upset if it doesn't like hit the, the crack like it's espresso pressure <laughs> that's funny that's funny um yeah i asked if you did pour over because the spout for that kettle is like good for that is is good for oh, timing, timing the swirl on a pour over <laughs> oh okay cool well now i'm gonna now i'll be looking into that after this yeah you can get a one cup pour over thing uh set up for yourself <laughs> <laughs> um oh okay so we're gonna we're gonna skip this for now but folks if you want to show and tell on the stream or, or be featured here you just have to tag me on instagram or Twitter, and my uh, username is Randwitches. It, it's sad that I don't have Randwitches on Twitch. One one day I will, but you can you can check out my Instagram account there. Um, oh, Chris is here. Chris has subscribed for nine months in a row. Thanks so much. Oh, that's Thanks, so Chris. Nice. Yeah, I love that. Oh, we got eggs in the chat from Chris. Yeah, and when you when any when anyone becomes a subscriber on this channel, you unlock the egg emotes designed by my friend Rachel Viola who goes by Drip uh, and uh, she streams on Tuesdays or I don't know if she's actually streaming on Tuesdays anymore because she started to learn how to tattoo which is so cool very very cool more eggs in the chat thanks y'all thanks y'all my goodness um, so the topic at hand synthesizers and burgers two things that you enjoy Lenny <laughs> yes yes and I would say a lot of people in the chat also enjoy those things. Uh, oh, I know, awesome. I know a some bunch good of people in the chat from uh, the music scene or from ch from ship music specifically. Um, yeah, I won't call you out individually, but yes, that you you all know what we're going to be talking about, which is very exciting. So there's somebody that can help me learn. I, I just bought something called an M8 tracker. Or, oh uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So like, it's it's. I, I don't think I'm going to get it till the summer, but. Um, but I'm hoping, you know, I, I, from my understanding, trackers are like a little different, like on workflow and stuff. Yeah, it makes trackers in <laughs> yeah. chat. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really great to see so many different kinds of musicians picking up that specific tracker. Um, it's actually made in LA. Did you know that? No. Oh, no. yeah. Um, so if you want to look this up afterward, um, our friend Tim. Uh, is the creator of the M8 tracker and he what? Goes, yes and he goes by no the name way. Trash 80 so I'll I'll put the link in the chat here oh um, my god yeah he hasn't really been making music he's more of an engineer um but his all of his EPs are bangers like they're all very fun he's a legend yeah trash80.com <laughs> you can check him out oh that's right um, huge okay. synth nerd <laughs> Um, and like some like random trivia about Tim is that he used to do like a lot of engineering consulting work. And um, when the Black Eyed Peas played the Super Bowl, he did the LED displays for for some of the artists that were performing. Oh, wow. I, don't, I don't remember which 
like which artist was wearing the led like visor or clothing but he was programming a lot of that stuff oh, so he's a very so talented cool. person um yeah Danelle has a good recommendation here check out the icarus ep it's it's every no skips <laughs> Oh, perfect. No yeah, that sounds <laughs> so awesome. Good. Um, but yeah, that is that is locally made in LA and uh, we'll be shipping very close to you, actually. <laughs> Somebody will so walk funny. it over to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. Here's another link. Oh, perfect. Band That's camp. how I was wondering if they had a band camp. Yeah, Tim definitely does. Um, that's so funny that you just got the M8. Um, but what else is in your studio? Like, what is uh, maybe the first and oldest one that you have? Oh, okay actually that's so funny like uh, i have uh i was so one's like right next to me and then like one is uh so here i'm gonna grab it hold on one second yes so, <laughs> i'm so excited <laughs> this is like this is like the classic that when i was in college like I would just mess with like a bunch of soft synthesizers and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is the thing that I want. It was like, this is 300 bucks or like 400 bucks. Like, <laughs> man, I really want this, but it might take a while, but it's a, the, the <gasps> micro cord. Oh, the vocoder. <laughs> it's a vocoder and everything. So uh, <gasps> like, uh, I wanted this for, I, I wanted this for years. Um, Look at that little and, thing. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It was so funny because I was like so in the back in back when I used to do it, I used to just do it from the laptop. And um I used to like I remember for the longest time, uh, how did I know it's gonna be the micro cork, right? Well here, let me show you the other one, like the other one in conjunction. <laughs> but basically what I was gonna say is like I didn't uh um I didn't really uh understand like the like anything about this stuff like no, none of the technical aspects so i've been doing like soft synths the whole time so as soon as like i just plugged it i think the first time i ever used that synth i like plugged it in via usb or something like that I was like, why isn't this thing working <laughs> and then this thing uh this is like my second thing i ever Look got at that little is, buddy uh, uh, wait where am i oh there we go yeah this is my uh moog slim fatty so another one where it was like those like these things in conjunction like I was like, what the hell? Like, how, how do I, how do I even hook this up? And so, yeah. <laughs> it's got no speakers so. on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, so that, those are like my, those were like my main ones. Like um, my, the, the only like big um, piece of work that I have um, on like streaming services, like was like the thing I wrote in like 2014 that like, I had no clue about like mixing or anything like that. So it's just mm. like, you have to take it for like what it's worth with the composition and stuff. But there are some cool parts that the micro cord had in that thing. So. Yeah. Well, what is, what would you say now is like your mainly used workhorse? Do you have one that you stick to or are you kind of all over the place? Well, I just bought like, a, like, a, so I went on this, like six months ago, I went on this binge, right? And so like, <laughs> I bought all this stuff and then, uh, and then now, like in the past, like few weeks, I like went on this, like sell buy other stuff because now I understand what I want binge. Mm -hmm. But I would say um, my like go to isn't actually actually necessarily a synth now. It's mm -hmm. um, it's actually a, a sequencer. It has built in synth engines in it, oh. but it's like it, it's a sequencer slash um, like drum machine sampler. It's called a a, a deluge. A, it's, it's I've seen guy, that. Yeah, so some guy out of I think it's New Zealand makes the makes that, and um, they're they're like real big on like updating it constantly with firmware and stuff, awesome. and it just it, it's phenomenal. It's like it's the brain, it's the brain of my setup. Even though I do use a, um, even though I do use like a computer because that's a that's a whole other thing. Like I went from like computer to Dallas back to com like to this like more <laughs> hybrid workflow, but the Deluge is like my my workhorse and then um yeah yeah when did you where where was the change like when when did you you know decide that you needed a whole room <laughs> like or you needed like your recording cave <laughs> yeah it's funny because like you know when it like uh it started like the, the the first two places obviously it was like in college and stuff it was just like doing it off a computer or whatever wherever i was mm -hmm. at and then it like evolved into like a desk next to the bed when we lived in like a small one bedroom place, mm -hmm. you know, and then the two bedroom place got the music set up. 
And then uh, when we actually went to get a house, like uh, I was like, it's got, I gotta have. You gotta have a room. Yeah, I gotta have a room. <laughs> so now I like, cause we had to do some renovations. So we actually like, when the walls were down, we put up all this like rubber matting and stuff like that um, behind the wall. So it's like kind of quasi soundproof. Nice, very nice. Um, it's cool that you had the opportunity to do that. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, it's very thankful for that, and especially with a hobby that is, can make you very poor. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, a lot of us can attest to that. Yes, <laughs> I was always um, kind of like a hawk on eBay looking for Casios because I, I I stuck to the Casio brand um, specifically because the tones like really matched the Game Boy because that's what my bandmate used, he used LSDJ on a Game Boy. And so <laughs> I had um, these really lovely shimmery Casio um, melodies that would go with it. And the one that I used the most was the CT460, which is just kind of like a whatever Casio. It's like not even that special. <laughs> it has a lot of like, you know, those, you know, those signature presets of all the funny little beats. Um, oh, that's but- cool. But it had these, it just had like a sound effect bank that was very small. It was like six little sounds. Like one of them was applause. <laughs> um, <laughs> my favorite one to use was the ocean. Um, besides actually sampling the ocean, it was pretty great. And it had like this seagull squawk. <laughs> It'd be oh, like, no way. Shh, shh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so that would be the intro for one of our songs whenever we played live. Um, it was oh, that's cool. <laughs> it was adorable. Um, and it's not that I had a variety of Casios. I actually had three of those of the same model because they like a backup because they went break. Out yeah, they, yeah, um, yeah. I, I took it on tour, and so I beat it up pretty badly, and so I didn't have a good one for recording. <laughs> So oh, wow. I was just on eBay trying to find as many Casio CT460s as I could. So I have three. Um, That's I have a, cool. I think I have another, I have a few others in the 400 series that my brother grew up playing with because he plays the piano uh, and teaches music. Um, oh, cool. But I, I was kind of a late bloomer with it. Um, I would say that a lot of my musical skills are still pretty elementary. <laughs> But well, I mean, I, I, I like to do this and I like to play a lot, but I would definitely say that like, I mean, I know like your kind of basics on synthesis and stuff like that, but it's not like I'm a shredder on the keyboard yeah. or anything <laughs> like that. So a lot of my stuff is like either programmed or sequenced. Um, and then like when it comes like, it's like when everybody tell me about the amazing dude that, that made the, the M8 tracker, like I should know that stuff. Like, no, <laughs> you don't need to know that stuff. That's just trivia. Can I, um, can I look, so one year for Christmas, my dad gave me a, um, a Casio keyboard that had like somebody modified with circuit bending. Oh, Let me I see what that. model yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, Let yeah. me pull it out. Circuit bending is a whole nother thing too. Oh yeah. I have no clue what's going on with it. But... <laughs> oh yeah, it's a Casio, yeah. It's a Casio DM100. Oh, so, cute. Whatever that is. DM series, DM100. Let's see. So, got a little double decker here. Oh, uh, wow. But yeah, here's the whole. <laughs> Look at that. Here's the whole thing. You're holding it like a boombox. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> oh, my God. I messed with this a little bit, but I got to give it, I, I got to um, spend a little bit more time with it and stuff. But it was funny. I guess the person that, um, the person that sold it to my dad before he got it, like, cause he bought it secondhand or whatever is like, do, uh, do you know who you're giving this to? Because like, this is not a toy. Like yeah. this is not for kids. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Danelle circuit bending reminds, makes me think of burn kit 2600. That's another great band. Um, I'll have to check that out too. Yeah. They, um, I got like homework now after this. Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of knowledgeable folks in the chat. That's um, really yeah. cool. Yeah, Burn Kit did a mix of chip music with circuit bending, and then they also did like a reggae EP, which was so great. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go, Handy Link. Oh, perfect. Sonic Sanctuary. You're gonna have to go through the chat links later yeah. after the mm-hmm. show. <laughs> Thanks, Danelle. That's Danel. gonna be awesome. Um, what else? So yeah, I had CT460. My favorite one that I have is a Casio CK500 which has a tape deck on it. 
I'm going to put a link. It's what? 1985. Yeah, it has two cassette decks on it. And um, you can record from the radio also. So I had a fun little project where I would um, record bits from the radio and then fuck it up and then play over it. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's really neat. Uh, yeah, here, Danelle sharing. Duke Dubious is the reggae album. Yep. And I saw that live. It was really fun. <laughs> DeMarco, do, their name's DeMarco Danelle. or that's their... Denel. Real name is Denel. Man, you yeah. got you got the you got the incredible like setup with the links like on on the fly. <laughs> yeah, I mean Denel is well studied in this and even wrote uh wrote a little bit on Tiny Cartridge. Is that right? <laughs> Wait, Fontana's closed. Fontana's is a, a venue in New York City. I didn't know that oh, it wow. closed. That's where I played. I played there. I would say more than any other venue. Uh. Yeah, I played at Death by Audio and Fontana's and The Tank and uh, a few other places. But damn, I didn't know it closed. R.I.P. F in the chat for Fontana. <laughs> Crap. Oh, my gosh. Um, but I think it's really fun that you play soundtracks to public domain movies Um when you when I first discovered that you were doing synth stuff, I like I was like, oh, you should follow Chris Burke who is a is a classic like horror composer um uh he go he he has a podcast called mandible judy um, yeah yeah like, uh, we yeah we follow each other now i've been keeping an eye like uh we need to check out some of their stuff so yeah, yeah. um chris mm -hmm. is an old school synth composer um he did um toxic avenger and i forget what other movies oh splatter university um but he was telling us in a workshop he was showing off uh pretty much what you were doing like telling us about the synths that he's using and stuff like that um but he said you know he didn't use sequencers at that time so he's literally just hitting a no for like 30 minutes and modulating yeah like woo. yeah um, but it's really cool that, you know, we have access to, to folks who've been doing this for so long and, um, I don't know, there's just like so many places for it to go. It's so cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, what do you, can like, let's talk about a little bit of the technical setup of it. Like, how do you display your, the movie while you're doing the soundtrack thing? I do, um, like I use Twitch studio. And uh, uh, so I do like, uh, I do a screen share and I just do the screen share of, of whatever's on QuickTime. Got it. And then, um, and then like, I have myself, like I have myself, like kind of right there. Yeah. And I, I actually, um, for tonight I have, for the first time I'm trying this, uh, little lapel mic or whatever. When oh I go. yeah. Cause, like, yeah. That, Cause I was always like, kind of just right by the mic going like all right here we go like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then, like trying to do stuff and then coming back to it because uh i think i was just because like i said like like sometimes during the streams like they can get a little they get a little boring because you just have like for maybe like a minute it's just going all you have is bop 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 <laughs> you know <laughs> while you're trying to like add something else to kind of give them the environment so if i'm not like saying like oh hey what's that guy doing in the why are they why are you they have talking? commentary like, oh, yeah, I do the car. <laughs> so it's like it's, it's kind of like composition meets like mystery science theater. I kind of love that. Like That's a, funny. Except with like a way less funny dude. <laughs> so. I mean, uh, it's a great idea. It's it sounds like like a good time. Uh, <laughs> did you have you? Had yeah, a it's kind favorite? of evolved, but uh, have that? you had a favorite movie so far that you've done the soundtrack to? The um the um what was it uh there was some vampire movie curse of the vampire oh. um was uh was a really good one just because it was like i mind you like we watch these movies silent while i compose like compose right. to them but like it just it just had like really good action scenes and like it was one of those it was one of those earlier streams that i did where like there was a lot of stuff that I had going that actually like fit really well with the movie and it just <laughs> it like it really worked out well. Like I said, it's so fun. It's it's such a uh, it's such a fun like dynamic because it's like sometimes it's like 
eh, it's kind of going along, you know, whatever. But then sometimes when it hits, it's like, oh man, I'm super excited. Like I, uh, there's definitely some like song concepts to go off of there that like I have to take to make into something else. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Danelle is saying, I missed the chance to see our friend Makeup and Vanity set play a live soundtrack to some horror movie in 2018. I oh, also missed cool. this. I did not. I did not see that. Are you familiar with Makeup and Vanity set? No, uh uh-uh. Oh, more homework. (laughs) Jeez. More homework. Um, Yeah, Makeup and Vanity Set also does um, kind of cyberpunk horror soundtracks um, and really, really cinematic, like, uh, albums, I would say. Um, Yeah, it's Uh, great. Okay, (laughs) Danelle is on it. Danelle is on it. Thank you, Danelle. Um, My goodness. but we can keep talking about synths, but I also want to get some words in about burgers. Uh, yes. You love them. I love them. Uh, you're in LA. Oh, I don't know if we established this, that you're in LA. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah where, where would you point people if they just got off the plane and, <laughs> and wanted a burger? Well, um... Oh, that's a good, that, what, that was like a really, man, that was a really good question. Like straight <laughs> off the plane. Take your time. <laughs> well, I, okay. So this is not like the burger knowledge goes deeper than this, but I do have to say if somebody's just hopping off the plane, like if they've ever been to California before, like they have to go yes. to the chain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they have to go to in and out right? Yep. Um, that's okay. So that's that. But then besides that, there'd probably be two <laughs> that I would say like, uh, um because let, let, let's just say i could go into like variations of burgers too because like you have your more like fast food style then you have your more like fatter like gourmet restaurant style mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but i'm saying if we're sticking to like like the that kind of like slimmer burger you, um i'd recommend um burgers never say die which is in silver lake it started oh. off as like a little pop-up spot uh, and now it's like got a brick and mortar over in Silver Lake. And then there is another place that's phenomenal that was, I think it was originally a, a French restaurant called Papilla or something like that. Oh. But they like they were so successful with their burger and fried chicken sandwich that they that they became for the win. And I think that's all they all they serve now. But that burger is incredible too. Oh, I see. Um, I haven't been to either of these places. So I'm that's real awesome. big. I'm real obsessed with. So I had this like probably 10, 10, 15 years ago, I started to realize like, I think I have more of a, cause I, or I, I thought, I think I have more of a preference for like the quarter pound, like thin patty from like a fast food spot, mm. um, if you will. And like, and so that was, that was kind of rested in my brain for several years. And then a uh, 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 high school uh, classmate of ours, Sean Lewis took me to, um, took me to a place called um what was it called again oh i think it was the burgers never say die but it was like a pop-up where they did it like in a restaurant Mm -hmm. and um and so it's that smash burger style so that like smash burger style is like super big now yeah Uh, i'm all about it oh i like it i love it um and i can make a really good one oh we'll have to Um, I'll tell you all about it when, whenever you're ready. <laughs> yeah, wait. Um, so the Smash Burger <laughs> is, yeah, <laughs> Super Smash Burgs Melee. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, my favorite burger is the Falco Burger. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, the science behind a Smash Burger is that we are exposing more surface area to the burger meat when you smash it down uh, and it builds that lovely crust and the Maillard reaction, mm-hmm. which caramelizes the meats. Um, and uh, I, I'm a huge fan of it. Like, please like regale us with how, how you go about the smash burger. Wow. So that, that makes sense why it tastes so good. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so I, I'll, um, like all, uh, typically what I do is you got to go 80, 20, with the um, with the uh, with the meat and the best way to do it's with two ounce um, two ounce balls of the um, of yeah the you started beef. the ball huh yeah mm-hmm. yeah and then so um, I like I like to keep it very basic I like the um, your lamest like wonder buns like the small <laughs> white little buns that's that's the way um, 
to go and then you make like some kind of like cheesy thousand island aioli yeah. type deal like <laughs> with QP, QP and ketchup and like some p- chopped up pickles or something um then you then you um caramelize some onions so usually it'll be like whatever beer i'm drinking getting poured in there while it slow cooks until it you know <laughs> get that good color and so all that's going on while you prepped everything and then you get that you get that griddle like a flat iron griddle going super hot mm-hmm. with some parchment paper and you um and you um you throw on you throw on the patties and with but you put the parchment paper over it with your spatula and you just you annihilate it like you get it to where <laughs> like, it's i get it to where it's like it, it's it's so flat to the point where it's like so like paper thin and you can see through it and then it only needs like a a few seconds and then you um you take the spatula and you actually have to like scrape at it because you could just try to like flip it's gonna like break apart and stuff like that so you got to kind of like gently scratch around flip it over throw on american cheese on each oh i almost forgot you salt them of course and uh, Mm. put some mustard mustard on them and uh since wendy's was my first job i used to always do the w uh and mustard on the patty i (laughs) didn't know oh my god that's funny that's really funny Um, (laughs) and then uh and then um yeah, but once you do that, once you got the flip, it's already, it's already, the work has been done. Yeah. And then I like to have a little bit of QP on the buns. This is my universal bun uh, <laughs> <laughs> gesture. Uh-huh. And, uh, and then, so once the burgers are flipped, I'm throwing the buns on. Uh, and then, so it gives it like a nice, nice warm bun. You throw everything together. And then like, I actually like mash the bun. You smash the so bun also. Yeah. So it's like this just. It's like, it's almost like one of those like burgers from like that, what is that guy's name? Wimpy from like Popeye. Like it's just one of these like, like little burgers. And it's, it's, uh, it's been a hit whenever I've had people over, um, cook them up. I've been other people's places and cooked them up for them. And it's a hit. You Um, taught me one thing. I didn't use the parchment move. I, oh yeah. Yeah. Where did you learn that? I think I had seen, um, not there's there's another burger spot called Heavy Hand at Easy Street. So there's a place uh-huh. called Easy Street off of Western, like kind of on the northern end of Koreatown, if they're still there. And um, they, uh, I saw them use the parchment paper, and then like sometimes the parchment paper will stick a little bit, and you gotta like finesse it, like you're pulling it <laughs> off and taking like the flat spatula, and kind of just brushing it, and then mm. it slowly like peels away. But yeah, yeah, that's a that's a big part of it because you just try to smash with the spatula, like it you know, goes holes, through the holes. Come through. Yeah. Yeah. That's so smart. That's so smart. Also, you are smashing raw meat onto the spatula, um, and you kind of want to avoid that for cross contamination. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the parchment is such a smart idea. I really, I've literally never heard that. That's amazing. <laughs> um, we have James oh. in the chat. Uh, for me, it's all about the smash. So the burgers could get climb up a twenty foot ladder and then swan and <laughs> bomb off the making sure land as much body weight in the burger as possible. Um, Just as long as there's stability in the grill, you know, <laughs> where it's not gonna flip. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, James. <laughs> We, we love to hear it um and welcome welcome to the chat james um oh but, and yeah oh sorry go ahead. No, i was go just ahead, gonna go say ahead. as long as the as long as the grill isn't rate or isn't at like 120 percent either or else it's gonna go just flying off the screen that was my little super smash <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah flying up. we don't want burgers to fly off the screen we want it to fly into our mouths mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, let's see. I, I have some burgers that I've made in my career and I think some of you in the chat have had them before. Um, I've got some slides. Um, this is one of my smash burgers. Wow. Way too much tomato. I, in retrospect, uh, <laughs> but you can see it's a super, super thin patty. Yeah. Um, is, is that egg at the bottom? It's mustard. It's a Dijon mustard and really fluffy butter lettuce. Uh, oh i see okay oh that's two tomatoes yeah it's okay. a lot of them toma- like way too much tomato um bowser is the top tier super smash burger character right flame plus weight yes i agree <laughs> yes i agree um this is a lamb burger with bacon um and inside of the lamb mixture i put like sumac which is kind of like a lemony um herby situation uh and then we do a little bit of uh, fresh thyme in there as well it looks like a very very simple burger um it's on an english muffin with bacon 
Um, but the burger is so juicy that I didn't really want to put anything else. <laughs> oh, it's great. I'm a huge fan of the English muffin as a bun. Have you tried that? No. No. I feel like I, I feel like please don't get offended, but I would love to put an egg on that for breakfast. <laughs> oh, I am absolutely not offended when folks want to add <laughs> eggs to anything. Please. Like that with like um uh some like some kind of cheese. Oh man, that would be yeah. that would be incredible. Let's put egg on the screen to acknowledge the egg. We love eggs. We love eggs in the show. We love it. <laughs> um this is from my cookbook this is a shallot burger and it's based on um a james beard recipe uh james beard you know very renowned uh chef there's a foundation in his honor um and uh, there's like restaurant awards like james beard restaurant awards um but this is a shallot burger where um, you shave shallots with a grater and then you add two tablespoons of heavy cream. So this is a very like texturally soft burger and it's a little thicker um, than what I'm used to. It's more like a puck, but it is so good. <laughs> it's got some Romesco sauce, tomato, and instead of lettuce, I used a Napa cabbage here for a little bit more crunch. Um, and then what's the other sauce on the bottom? It's Meyer lemon mayo that I have on the bottom. Whoa. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, y'all making me want to eat meat again. Oh, no. <laughs> Danger zone, Chris. Danger zone. Um, this is another smash burger that I had. This one is white cheddar. And a fun thing that I like to do in the summertime is instead of lettuce, I add crunch by doing um, carrot ribbons. Oh. You, can, you can dress the carrot ribbons with like some vinegar. So it has like more of a, um, like a slaw flavoring um, to offset yeah. all, all the fat in there. Um, it adds a lot of volume too. So you can do this with zucchini. Um, any vegetable that can become a noodle or a zoodle. Uh, you can you can do this with a vegetable peeler. That car those carrots, I I would love that on like some kind of like brisket sandwich or something Ooh. like that, or pulled pork <laughs> oh, or something. Yeah, that sounds great. I love that. That's a good idea. Um, I love that carrot idea. That's cool. See. David got some super thin buns from the grocery store. Um, sandwich thins, almost like a flat McMuffin. I tried those. Um, I thought they were a little dense for what I was doing, but I need to just try them again. And I think I over toasted them because they're so thin. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> um, my go to bun, as you see pictured here, is the Martin's potato roll. Uh, it's, you know, way more prominent here on the West Coast, uh, on the East Coast. Sorry, I got confused. <laughs> um, I think there is a couple smash places that use like a potato kind of roll light that looks very similar to that mm -hmm. they're a little squishy but they toast yeah. it nicely it looks it looks nice because even though it looks kind of big volumized because like that's sometimes the risk you have with burgers is they get too bready with the bun mm -hmm. but that looks like it just compresses so nice oh, oh yeah fluid. it totally yeah. does i actually use um the potato rolls sliders like the really small ones like little squares to make mm -hmm. um pressed cuban sandwiches so they they do oh. like they get like nice and crisp when they smash down so oh, super good <laughs> this, is, this is the danger lenny of being on my show is that you are immediately hungry <laughs> well thankfully i ate a burger before this thing so <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's why you might if i'm not talking it's because i'm probably going like, you have oh, a, the burger <laughs> nap yeah you have a burger <laughs> nap um hey schmoss good to see you welcome to the chat hey schmoss <laughs> We're talking burgers. Um, this is a... Okay, we're delving into the veggie burger arena. This is my... Um, this is also from my cookbook. This is a black bean burger um, with some uh, Meyer lemon mayo and more Romesco on an English muffin. I was obsessed with English muffins at the time of the writing. Um, <laughs> but um, the way that we constitute the black bean burger is uh, mashing up half of them so it becomes a paste so i'm not adding um a lot of breadcrumb in there um or fortifying ingredients there's some nutritional yeast um and some onion and some carrot but uh, mostly it is black bean and cinnamon in there yeah a representation for Ooh. the veg vegetarians here <laughs> yeah awesome um this one is a vegan barley burger you can see that there are specks of like carrot 
Um, I was trying to go for like a falafel texture on this one. You can see with like the, the crisps edged, but this is like, this was falling apart a lot. It needed a lot more binder. <laughs> Oops. It but, looks pretty uh, good right there. Yeah, it had a lot of kale and um, kale, carrot, and barley in this one. Yeah, really good crust on this bad boy. If I if I had Instagram Reels or TikTok at the time, you would have seen me drag my knife on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what were you gonna say? Oh no, I was just gonna say in honor of a few bad dudes, we gotta figure out a way to do uh, um, some vegan smash burgers. I wonder how that would even be uh, like uh, feasible, you yeah. know? But that'd be sweet. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, you could very much do that with the Beyond Meat burgers. They're they're like very very smashable. Oh yeah. <laughs> you just gotta be careful because they're so soft that you might like over smash it. <laughs> like it would fall apart if it was like too smashed, like way too thin. My first thought was like so wrong. I was like, oh well, we'll just bind it with an egg. Well, no, no, it no, it's not vegan. <laughs> you, know, you can't do that. <laughs> So whatever is like a good uh, savory um, savory binder, you have to use that to kind of keep that all together. Mm -hmm. um, there's flaxseed, there is um, bean, there is uh, what else? There's also just egg, which is like a fake egg that you can buy now. That's all, it's made out of like, I think, what is it? Chickpeas, I think, I'm not really sure. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, Chris, if you do try a, a Beyond Burger smash, we have to report back, please. Um, oh, I would love to hear about it too. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this is a uh, this is a debatable burger. This is a chicken burger. Is it a burger if it's still if it's chicken? Is it a burger if it's turkey? <laughs> is it ground? Mm hmm. Yeah, well, I, I say yes. Yeah. That that's the mm -hmm. definition we're going with. That it's ground in a patty, formed in a patty, and then and fried. Yeah, because have you ever seen those like burgers that uh, I had one in Minnesota one time on a road trip? They're like loose. It's like loose ground beef as Ooh. opposed to like uh, a fully formed um, a fully formed patty. Cool. Um, I would try it. I would wait. Boig or bo blog? It's a it's a boiger. It's a boy. Oh. No. <laughs> Don Lenny, we're talking about burgers. <laughs> um, what this is a game in the show is incredible. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I have a bunch of show plates for food styling because that was another job that I had, you know, in my in my career of things. Boiga, boiga. Yep. <laughs> boiga. <laughs> this is a chicken with ponzu. In the ground, in the ground meat. So I didn't have any dressing for this because it was already in the burger. Um, so it was very simple. Um, I also did like a lot of hot pepper, like chili pepper, in there. So it was a spicy ponzu chicken burger. Yeah. My mouth is watering. Uh, I need one. <laughs> um, but I think that's it for my burgers. Yep. This is just a little slideshow of, of burgers. That, that I've made in the past. I've made all kinds. Um, I don't know. I, I really love grilling. It's it's like one of my favorite pastimes. I've like written a book about it. Like it's, I don't know. Something about, I love fire. I think I think that that's what it boils down to is that I, I just really like fire. <laughs> that's awesome. Mm -hmm. You said you said grilling. It made me think there was. I think it was. Uh, I think it was in Germany. I went to a burger spot and it was called Girly Idol. I think it was in it. <laughs> we we love a good a good pun name. It's very oh, good. I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy to dish them out. Like, uh, but but I have to warn you, my success rate's about like one out of ten. <laughs> hey, that's right. You actually helped me with a pun. Uh, I made a greeting card. <laughs> yeah, with your book. Yep. S yeah, seriously grateful. Uh, yeah, yeah. We made greeting cards because uh, I think on Facebook I posted, uh, "I need help thinking of a pun," because um, it's like a thank you card that I that I sent out with all of my cookbooks uh, when I first when they first came out, uh, and you were the one that came up with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a. It's funny because I'm I'm like uh, I've been a dad now for like almost ten months. 
So, but uh, the joke, (laughs) thanks, thank you. So the joke with like family and friends is like, I've been preparing for this my whole life with like the amount of puns and and dad jokes I like to do. Oh, (laughs) oh, boo, (laughs) dad jokes. Um, Okay, we have a question from Chris. Opinions on that mess of a burger that keeps popping up on my Twitter feed every few months for the past three years, the one with boiling hot cheese on it, so when you bite into it, it explodes. Oh, um, I've seen, I don't think I've seen this recently, but I know what you're talking about. It's a burger that's got a bunch of like cheese smashed into it so that when you bite into it, it, it kind of, it's like <laughs> vulcanates, like <laughs> it just like oozes out. Um, I haven't had too many successful stuffed burgers because they've yeah. just leaked out the butt like they they didn't like it's not very um yeah i i I agree with you schmas i don't love a stuffed burger you could just as easily put it on the burger with less hassle it's just a lot of mess and then once the the cheese exits the burger it hardens up like exit it it, it, yeah I say Sorry. exits because it comes out the back. <laughs> I, I was just trying to throw egg in there because I know. Oh, egg. Egg. <laughs> um, egg. Uh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'll, lim- I'll try to limit that. Um, no, it's all good. I would say though, like, okay, so like a burger like that, it's almost like a little novelty type thing, yes. right? Like, oh, that's cool. Like it, it has cheese in it. It's like a lot of times with things like that, it's not like I have a strong opinion about it. It'd be like if I'm going to have it like, oh, cool, I tried that. That was really cool. Mm-hmm. But I still prefer my Smashies or something like that. <laughs> so, you know, it's like a different kind of burger to try. And maybe it's good kind of um, in a vacuum. There's a, a place here that if anybody here is based out of LA, you should try. It's um, it's called uh, the restaurant called Petite Trois. I think it's is what it's called Ooh. and there's one there's one in like uh kind of like the center of la and then there's a few in the valley now and they do like what's called it they call it a big mech and it's like this almost like like it's a thicker burger so it's kind of getting away with what we're talking about but it's got um it's got like a like almost like a french dip glaze to it <gasps> um and uh it's like a big i think it is supposed to be like a playoff of like a phenomenally gourmet big mac but it's really good <laughs> it's, it's it's really good yeah i think it's petite toile i think the place called cool um uh, yeah i was gonna bring this one up but the veggie shroom burger at shake shack which is our in and out competitor oh um, yeah it's a yeah it's a portobello mushroom that has monster cheese stuffed inside i think this is construction like uh it is constructed differently it's not like cheese is oozing out like the portobello mushroom is kind of like a cup it kind of keeps the cheese oh like, yeah in the middle yeah and so they bread it and deep fry that um and so i don't i've had that burger and it doesn't go all over the place uh like the burger we're talking about like the one chris is talking about but uh i kind of like it how do how do we spell petite it's a. Uh... This is like gonna expose me for my pronunciation of stuff. It's petite, like you have, but then uh, T R O I S. Oh so I yeah, I'm saying that wrong. I got it. I got twa. I got the website. Cool. I put the website yeah. there. Burgers. Hey burgers, LT, yeah. we are talking about burgers. Hey LT. Um. Yeah. How do you feel about? like expensive burgers like do you have a ceiling for like how much you'd be willing to pay for a burger <laughs> you know what i look at it like i i like to think like like i think if they're going to get expensive there's got there's probably some novelty aspect to it yeah. it's like something you'd constantly eat so it's like um but i will say like unless or or if it's more expensive like it that's pro- there should be some kind of like redeeming quality to it or something that makes it like a um like you'll want to have it mm-hmm. but because otherwise like if you're getting more expensive then you have to be evaluated uh you know against that pricing like is it like does that make sense like yeah. what, what, do, what do i get out of this burger yeah yeah um it really cracks me up when when people throw really expensive ingredients on burgers because 
a lot of the quality degrades when you when you heat really delicate things like caviar. Like a caviar burger makes no fucking sense. Like <laughs> it just really doesn't yeah. make any sense um, because you've ruined the caviar. Um, gold leaf is just gold. It's just gold paper. Like you don't need it. <laughs> You're just paying you for the gold. Yeah, that's a that, that's such a good point because it's probably like diminishing returns. Because I bet if you took like the finest like wagyu there is or something like that and ground <laughs> yeah. it, like how much of a <laughs> like how how much better is that actually going to be? Like, will you be able to tell? Yeah, David uh, makes it clear here. I feel that way about some of the wild donut recipes out there. It almost takes away from the texture if it's too out there. Yeah, like yeah. Don donuts with way too many things on top of them, like you can't even bite into it. Like, <laughs> that's yeah, it's not just the like point elaborate donut. <laughs> it's just like elaborate Lego set at that point. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Or get excessive and crazy, like Heart Attack Grill place in Vegas. Um, Emily, who was on the stream a couple months ago, uh, spoke with me about um, spectacle and. Um, food crimes basically like uh we we took a look at, at a lot of places in las vegas that had just really exorbitant um menu items and a lot of them were burgers <laughs> oh, oh, you know wow. too much cheese like how do you even go about eating these things like i i'm a huge fan of the smaller smashy burgers but i also like you know, a regular stacked like Dagwood style burger. Um, I like. Wait a minute. Okay, let's rewind for a second. Lenny, what is your in and out order? Oh, that's a good one. Okay, <laughs> <No>. so, <laughs> let, I, let me let me think about this. <laughs> so, so like straightforward, like not um, not me like trying to say like oh I need to cut back <laughs> and, <laughs> and slim down a little bit. It would be. Okay, and, and this is going to be, like, at Let's one point it. people are going to, like, think I'm, I'm, I'm insane. And I understand this is not popular, but I, I, I love it. So, all right. So, it's a double-double animal style. No tomatoes, no pickle. And I love pickles. I just, sometimes on a burger, pickles to me kind of impede on the experience. Um, <laughs> and then, and then uh, um, so it's animal style with a with a raw onion added so you have the animal grilled onion mm, and the raw big onion. fat onion okay um, and then uh and then i get animal fries but i get the fries light because i like them undercooked you like them under <laughs> yes. yeah okay you are psycho <laughs> yeah that's where like it's so funny because like you know every every like month like somebody like wants to get like a bunch of likes and fall or t retweets on twitter so they they talk, they say in and out's trash right and so you know then everybody like you know then Dog there's like this whole it, onslaught yeah. of stuff and i just i just feel like object not objectively but like at, at face value like in and out's just like high quality it's really good and then but like and so i'm always like you're you if you don't like in and out like there's something wrong with you but like <laughs> but but when people crap on the fries I totally get it. Like I, but I like them. Like I like them, and I like I like them undercooked. But it's kind of one of those things where it's like I, I have enough awareness to understand that like my opinion is not that popular, <laughs> <laughs> and like this is just what I I prefer. Um, oh, and then the new thing that I do is I get four packs of chilies, and um, oh, the pickled and, chilies. Yeah, and I get the four four packs of pickled chilies, and then I get a side of spread, and uh, um, and uh, and I pour like I throw the spread down, and once so I dip my burger in there, I take a bite, take some fries, and then do a bite of the chili, and then have a sip of my iced tea. You have so, a full methodology. Oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's an ordeal. <laughs> And it's very hard to get me to take in and out to go because I feel like the experience yes. of the heat of the burger and and uh, I agree with you. And all I that, agree so. with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have some, we have some discord in the chat. Uh, <laughs> I know this about Danelle. I've made food for Danelle for the last ten years, and Danelle never wants tomatoes on on sandwiches. Yes, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I also agree. 
um, especially on hot, hot burgers and hot sandwiches. I think that the tomatoes wilt too much. It gets really goopy and watery. I do love a BLT. I do love tomatoes on other kinds of sandwiches, but just not on burgers for me. I'm so sorry, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Oh I'm my like, god. I I finally warmed up enough to tomatoes where, of course, the BLT is fine. And then、uh, also like a really good like cold cut, like Italian style sandwich or something.、Mm, like I'm definitely、yeah. down for the tomato.、Mm -hmm. that. <laughs> <laughs> BRB setting up a tomato PO box. <laughs> so I used to like I I used to talk about a lot growing up how much I hated tomatoes as like a kid. I, like my palate obviously evolved where I can finally like do it.、Mm -hmm. But it was so funny because people used to always say like you don't like tomatoes but you like ketchup and I'm like that's so different. It's like, very different. So different. We <laughs> <laughs> used to get that all the time. I do love a roasted tomato, Chris. Like that, it is very good. Um, and Danelle called it. That's roasted water, <laughs> spicy water. Gimme, gimme. Okay, we're having a chat, like taking it like to、yeah. the next degree. We have、I、a difference、it. of opinion here in the chat about tomatoes.、Um, everyone else, please sound off. Do you like tomatoes on your burgers or not,、uh, or in general? We'd love to hear it. <laughs>、uh, my In and Out order is not as involved. <laughs> It's a single, <laughs> it's a single patty.、Um, I do love the animal style、um, onions. I get、uh, the cheese.、Um, my fries are well done. I get double pickle actually. I get、oh, double pickle,、okay. and I do love the lettuce, but no tomato,、uh, no raw onion.、Um, And raw onion on a burger is growing on me, though. I will do one or two of the outer ring. Like I won't do the middle where you have to bite through the whole damn thing, but I will do like a couple of the outer rings now. But、um, I will get my fries well done, which is extra crispy. We're、yes. complete opposites on the fry texture thing. Yeah.、Mm -hmm. um, but what I appreciate about In and Out's fries is that they are. Like you know, they're not coated in anything. It's it's just like pure potato.、Um, yeah, they're not tossing it in starch. They're not tossing it in flour.、Um, it's literally just potatoes and salt.、Um, and I know they wrinkle a little bit. Like they kind of wilt faster than most French fries, but that's because it's a real thing. And yeah, <laughs> I kind of I I love them. And I like putting them in the burger. <laughs> and I do the same thing as you with your side of sauce, but I do it with a big thing of ketchup. Oh, nice! I used to be a monster when I was little. I was a salt fiend. I would add one extra little packet of salt to my ketchup. This Whoa! Is, this is why I have heart problems now. <laughs> 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 this is why I have high blood pressure. But I would do、um, one packet of the little salt mixed with the paper cup of the ketchup. I would use a French fry to stir that, eat the French fry, and then dip my burger in that. <laughs> Did you take that little paper cup and like push the outer edges off? No, so you can make, I、uh, didn't. More ketchup. <laughs> I should have. No, I should have. I wasn't very smart in that regard. But I would pick up the cup and like squeeze it from the bottom and like dip my. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's another good technique. Da、uh, David Brother says、um, that they do the plain double doubles. Ooh.、Um, uh, So I had a friend that did did that, and I always notice on the receipt because they like we always joke it's called Z style because I think they put like a Z to make it just like plain like meat and cheese. Oh, interesting! I didn't know that. Well, fun in and out tact. I could work there. <laughs> no, you know it's funny though. You know, as as you heard, my my orders like super like involved, and it's funny like the farther you go, like if you go, if if you you know like you're in Arizona or like. Somewhere else where you've traveled far to, like one of those newer In and Outs, when somebody's like, "What? Like, yeah. I can't get my order." And they're like, "You, you know, must be in, from California." In, in like in LA, everybody's like, "Yeah, no problem. All right, done. Yeah, see you later." But like other ones are like, "You, you said what again?" And like somebody else has to come over, and they're like, "They're not used to it." <laughs> yeah, because I think in California, people are so particular about how they want their order.、Mm -hmm. um, oh my god, the funniest thing happened.、Um, When my dad, my dad has this like habit of spoiling his appetite on Thanksgiving, like especially when I'm making Thanksgiving, I get real mad when other people eat other things that day or like spoil their <laughs> appetites. I'm like, Dad, why'd you go get in and out? Like, I get so pissed. But、um, 
one year he uh he walked up to the in and out and was like i'll have two patties with cheese fries um and then he said the rest of our orders and then brought it home when he opened up his order it was literally two patties like no bun <laughs> <laughs> Because they take you so literally when you when yeah. you order it in and out, yeah. like they're they're fastidiously obedient at in and out. Yeah. They take your order literally, and so when he opened it, he goes, "What the heck!" Like he opened he opened the bag and was like screaming and hollering about it. And my brother and, and it's I, all like, like wet through the paper. Yeah, like, my yeah. brother and I were like, we lost it. We were cracking up, and I'm like, "This is what you get for spoiling Thanksgiving. <laughs> this is what you get." <laughs> oh man. None pizza with left beef. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Perfect example. Thank you, Danelle. Um, oh, I didn't run this by you, but the way that we usually end the show is um we play a pretend round of chopped. Are you are you game for this? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, cool. Wait, do um, I need to cook something? No, or, you or don't need to. It's all mental. It's all just theoretical chopped. It's, oh, oh, yeah. That's real. Oh, that's so awesome. I have a, I have a little intro that I can read about it here. So, folks, let's pretend we're on Chopped. If you don't know this TV show, there is a basket with four mystery ingredients in it, and chefs have to use them in the, to make a dish. So there are no wrong answers. The purpose of this exercise is to think about how far ingredients can go and maybe, maybe inspire our next meal. Um, we'll go through each of the ingredients individually so everybody knows what you're playing with. Um, but just feel free to just start spouting off how you would combine two, three, or all four of the ingredients. Imagine you have all the tools and time you need. Just remember, feature the stuff in that basket um so chat shout out four ingredients that we can use maybe ones that we've mentioned through the show and uh and we'll play around so everybody is welcome to participate uh with answers and ingredients so uh let's go okay schmas giving us some king's hawaiian rolls um so these are bread rolls uh that are a little bit sweeter they have an egg wash on them it's on the brioche texture they're very soft Big Mac sauce. Thank you, LT. Um, this is typically a mixture of mayonnaise, ketchup, and relish. Uh, sounds other, like we're making sliders. Yeah, it sounds like we're making sliders. But, you know, let's challenge ourselves and uh, yeah. to see what else we can do. Um, Birthday there cake. Are, <laughs> there are also different ways to make burgers, so we can get wild with this. Um, need a couple more ingredients. Lenny, do you want to contribute an ingredient? Birthday cake's like two out there, huh? No. <laughs> oh, okay. We got fried chicken from Danelle. Do we want to do birthday cake? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we already it's have. It's weird a, like that. We have a right? bread. We have a bread roll already here. Ooh, well, amending to Nashville hot chicken. Wow. Okay, Nashville hot. Okay, Nashville Ooh. hot chicken. This is fun. Big Mac sauce. Yes, we're gonna add birthday cake. We're Our gonna do it. Our hometown got a hot chicken place. Um, we did. <laughs> yeah. Where? So there's, a, um, there's a place that started at like a house in um, in LA somewhere. It was called Dave's Hot Chicken, and um, and uh, then they opened a brick and mortar like uh, just north of Koreatown, and uh, I thought they were pretty good. And um, but somebody must have invested in them or something because they're everywhere now. Wow. Yeah. I can't believe there, you have yeah. one. <laughs> okay, okay, here are, here are the awesome. ingredients. Here, um, I'm going to pin this so that folks can see it. Um, how would you make a dish using Nashville hot chicken, Big Mac sauce, birthday cake? Oh, I, I repeated myself. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let's, let's not pin that. So it's Nashville hot chicken, um, King's Hawaiian rolls. There we go. That's what I missed. Uh, King's Hawaiian Rolls, uh, Big Mac Sauce, and Birthday Cake. So don't feel pressured to use all four ingredients, folks. You can use just two. So what would you make? Me? Or mm -hmm. just anybody? Anyone. You, me, and everyone in the chat. <laughs> the birthday cake is... Um... I presented it, but uh, <laughs> you didn't time. know what you were gonna do. Yeah, yeah trying to incorporate <laughs> that in. I want to. I like. I have. Like, I feel like you have to because that's the challenge part. Yeah. You know. Um, um. We can do. Let's see. 
Hmm. So I'm gonna chop up the hot chicken like into really like cube like small pieces with the breading and stuff. Mm-hmm. Then I'm gonna take Big Mac sauce and kind of mix it in almost like it's like a little bit of like a hot chicken Big Mac salad. Ooh, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, here we got Schmas with a similar idea here. You did a savory bread pudding. You could use the bread and cake as the bread and then make a super flavorful custard with the Mac sauce and stud it with chicken. Yeah, I mean, you're playing with a sweet and savory thing using the birthday cake. It's pretty that cool. Is, that is incredible. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> we we didn't really come good. to play here on Attack the Pantry. No. Like, um, no, that is. We have a seasoned chat. The chat knows what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, you're, I'm just like, yeah, just chop it up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a good strategy. Um, LT likes to make sandwiches out of all the ingredients, so let's hear it. <laughs> I mean, we could very easily do a hot chicken slider with the King's Hawaiian rolls. We could also do, um, let's see, uh, you could also do a roll-up. I've seen people flatten the entire King's Hawaiian rolls into a, like a sheet. I've seen people flatten that out with a rolling pin. You could spread the Big Mac sauce and then put the chicken in the middle and roll it up and slice it in the little pinwheel. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's pretty cute. Um, let's see. Uh, Could you smash up the birthday cake like really fine and then like saute it in a pan to where it almost makes like its own like, breadcrumb separate? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can make breadcrumbs out of birthday cake. It gets pretty um, like you lose a lot of the sweetness when you do that. Yeah. So that then maybe you can cope with it a little bit better <laughs> mixing it with the. Uh, the other ingredients. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, um, we could do sort of like uh, a panzanella. So we could do the Hawaiian rolls cubed. We could cube birthday cake, bake both of them until they become croutons, and then serve that yeah. with um, like uh, like tomatoes and the Big Mac sauce. Because panzanella is usually like tossed bread, um, like croutons with with tomato. Um, That's it. I. Uh, Schmoss, is that is that how you say it? Sh- yeah. Schmoss? They they got it. I, okay. I love that idea. Here we go. Uh, or like yeah. a chicken and waffles by vibe with the roll and cake smash in a waffle shape. Ding ding ding. That. <laughs> they cover the chicken That's and waffle incredible. Big Mac sauce and maple syrup and really lean into the sweet and savory. That is a good way to yes. look at it. Yeah, you could definitely put birthday cake in a waffle iron. Hell yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Um, Danelle is asking, is it possible to make the birthday cake a sauce somehow? Ooh, what if we made like a bechamel and then added the cake to it as like a thickener and then we could hide it in the sauce. Right. <laughs> you could do like, um, similar to like a chicken, uh, a biscuits and gravy, but it's like birthday cake gravy <laughs> with the oh, yes. Hawaiian rolls and fried chicken. Um, let's see. LT says a play on the donut burger. Cake is the buns with the hot chicken salad and mac sauce dressing. That sounds like fun too. Yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah, if we use round cutters on the birthday cake to make the buns and then toast both sides of that, um, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Um, we could shred the chicken, um, and refry it as carnitas. And, oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's take it further. We're going to make the birthday cake into a flour by toasting the crumbs and then making tortillas from that. Oh, wow. <laughs> we can go too far on this show. It's all theoretical. We can just <laughs> go wild with it. Um, or hot chicken salad with the sauce between Hawaiian rolls. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm loving this. I'm loving this direction, everybody. My goodness. Um, again, if you were just joining the chat, we are trying to figure out how to make a dish with Nashville hot chicken, King's Hawaiian rolls, Big Mac sauce, and birthday cake. Um, I was thinking you could do, I don't know. So the way that you make cake pops is that you crumble birthday cake and mix it with icing, but I don't know if I would (laughs) mix with anything else here. (laughs) Ooh, what if we did... A Nashville hot chicken fondue. 
like a like a dip situation. Like we chopped it all up, melted a bunch of cheese with it, and used the Hawaiian rolls as like fondue dippers. Oh yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm that sounds. With like a cake fun. with like a middle cut out, and then the whole dips in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> we use the cake as a vessel. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right, last Use call, it. folks. <laughs> yeah, last call, folks, for ideas. How would you combine Nashville hot chicken, King's Hawaiian rolls, Big Mac sauce, or birthday cake? Um, no pressure, again. And if you're not the kind of person who can who can think of things on the fly, you can tweet me your ideas. I will happily entertain them all week. I love it. Um, but yeah, we are reaching the conclusion of the show. Um Lenny, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's like, a blast. Cool to catch up with you and like Yeah, you too. Hear about all the the great burger places that you frequent. <laughs> you weren't lying. You you do love burgers. I, man, I, I got more too. Hit me up uh, if you want um if you want to hear some more spots and I I love your I love your audience, man. They're awesome. Oh, they're so much fun, like, aren't they? Yeah. 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 And dropping the knowledge. Like, I, I can't do anything for the rest of the day. I have to sit in a room. Yeah, you're going to have to go things. research everything. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So how can people follow you? What is your Twitch channel? Uh, my Twitch channel, um, it'll, like, it's just, uh, it's twitch.tv slash my, my um, name. I should have probably put Hanzilla there to Lenny. But um, it's my artist name, Hanzilla, H-A-N-S. I L A underscore, mm -hmm. and that's my uh, that's my channel. Oh, on Twitch you have an underscore also. Oh, okay, got yeah. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then uh, my Twitter is just Hanzilla Music. <laughs> cool. I'm gonna put that in the chat so people can follow you. Please give Lenny a follow and tune in tonight. What time are you gonna start? Uh, it would be 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific. And you are playing a soundtrack live to what movie again? Oh, this movie is... Hold on, I actually got to pull it up because I forgot. Let me see <laughs> here. <laughs> it is... Horror Express. Does so, it have to do with a haunted train? Here's the... Here's the um, <laughs> there's That's the, so the rad. Right there. That's so cool. Yeah, folks, if you want to give Lenny a follow, Lenny will be streaming tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, with Horror Express and making a live synth soundtrack. So <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll hopefully uh, I'll, I'll tune in tonight. Um, I would love, love to have you on there say hello yeah. and talk birthday cake. <laughs> Um, okay, so folks, stay tuned. We're going to raid the Monterey Bay Aquarium which is my favorite channel to raid. Um, but until then, I'll be back here 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern time on Wednesdays on Attack the Pantry. Uh, I think we'll do a cook-along next week. And it's also my birth month, my birthday. Woo! So we're definitely going to be celebrating uh, next week. Um, but yeah, thanks so, so much for hanging out, everybody. Thank you, Lenny. Um, Thank you, everyone. Everybody Thank enjoy you, the rest of your Wednesday. Uh, Lenny, stick around. I'll say goodbye to you properly while I get this raid set up. But um, Sounds good. See you, everybody. Enjoy. Bye, everybody. Thank you again. Enjoy the Monterey Bay Aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Wait. Okay. Pick I four fish right. to make a dish with. <laughs> <laughs> Do not cook the fish of the aquarium. <laughs> All right. Bye for real, everybody. See ya. Oh.